Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 7th of March with me Patrick Munley. Obviously the main driver of the news cycle remains the uh, Russian invasion in Ukraine and the uh, human tragedy that's being witnessed over there at the moment. Um, developments over the weekend are likely to uh, continue to royal markets and, and impact uh, volatility. But beyond that, we want to take a look at the data for the week ahead. And as we uh, start in the US on Tuesday with January consumer credit, and robust demand for credit as the pandemic savings continue to be worked down is likely to be witnessed. We also get the February NFIB small business optimism. Looking for a 97.4 print there, Omicron has temporary dampened confidence in the US. We also get January trades balance, uh, looking for a negative 87.2 billion print there. The deficit to remain wide on demand and inventory rebuild. Um, we round out Tuesday with January wholesale inventories, looking for a 0.8% print. Final estimates, supply chain issues are being worked through now, so looking for that to, uh, to print positive. On Wednesday, we get the January jobs job opening, looking for a 10,968k print there uh, continues to point to extraordinary demand for workers and uh, and that continues to drive uh, the openings activity in the US. And then importantly on Thursday we get the February CPI looking for a 0.8% print there as the price pressures continue to hold annual inflation at 40-year uh, highs. Uh, follow up on Thursday with initial jobless claims obviously likely to remain very low given the current uh, employment situation in the US with that really strong print on Friday for non-farm payrolls. Um, we round out the week on Friday with the uh, March University of Michigan sentiment. Looking for a 62.8 in line with the last print. We'll see inflation and rate concerns are starting to, uh, to hit confidence pretty hard in the US. From a technical perspective, the dollar index, strong rally, uh, taking out that uh, 98.34 level, we were looking at the 61.8% retracement of the 2021 uh, decline. So uh, unless we get an immediate snapback to the downside and um, basically take out Friday's lows at 97.80 on Monday and get some follow through, uh, the focus remains to the upside. I'm looking for a test now of monthly projected range resistance 99.23. Um, as pullbacks remain shallow there, I'm then looking for prices to extend up through the 100 level. Uh, and then as we get a corrective move from there, I'm ultimately looking for 98.40s to act as support as we then challenge the 78.6% retracement and the 2.618 extension of this, uh, of this last corrective leg, all coalescing around the 182 to 101 level. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns as an opportunity to engage on the short side. In the Eurozone, uh, Monday brings the March Centex Investor Confidence reading, looking for a 10 print there, geopolitical tensions, obviously a risk, and the economy, economy otherwise, though, has been pretty robust and healthy in Europe. On Tuesday, we get the fourth quarter GDP, looking for a 0.3% print, Third estimate is likely to confirm the component detail from the second estimate print. And then on Thursday, we get the all-important ECB policy decision, focus on updated forecasts and views on the current risks, anticipated that the ECB will hold rates at 0%. And that rounds out the activity in the, uh, the Eurozone in terms of data next week. And so what we're looking at now in terms of the euro, we took out the 78.6% 110 level. And similar to the dollar index, really, unless we get a snap back and close back through uh, 110.70 on Monday, I'm anticipating we grind lower here and ultimately get a test then of 106.50s before potentially seeing a more significant corrective move back into the 110s. But ultimately, we should, uh, we should print down uh, below 106. As, uh, as that 110, uh, 111 area acts as resistance.
in Japan next week. Let's see what we've got. On uh, Wednesday, we get the fourth quarter GDP, looking for a 1.4% print. Final estimate, underlying strength, evident now uh, versus the pre omnicom breakout in Japan. Uh, we then also round out the week on Friday uh, with uh, Japanese household spending, looking for 3.8% print. Uh, Pent-up demand still present in the uh, in the household spending there, but rising costs are likely to start to uh, to become a drag on that. From a technical perspective, as the dollar yen continues to find this resistance at this 115.70s, 116 area, I'm looking for a move down into ascending trend line support, 113.30, 113.50. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, ultimately targeting the equality objective versus the swing low 108.70s up to 117.70s. At this stage, as I've said before, it really would take a close through this trend line resistance to suggest a more meaningful top is in place, and we'll be looking back down then to the yearly pivot at 111. In the UK, uh, what do we have next week? Well, it's a pretty light data calendar, to be honest with you, in terms of, uh, in terms of the UK next week. All we've really got is uh, is Friday when we get uh, January trade balance. COVID-19 and the Brexit continue to create trade instability in the UK. And from a technical perspective, the uh, sterling is now back down testing this support zone at the 13160s. As this 133 area continues to act as resistance, I'm looking for another leg to the downside to target the equality objective versus the 138.35 swing high down to 130. From there, I'm anticipating a more sustained corrective move to take us back up into 133.50s to 134 levels. So watching for bullish reversal patterns as we test that 130 to engage on the long side at a minimum for a three-way corrective move into that 133.50, 134 level. And rounding things out in Australia, Monday, February, ANZ job ads. Uh, job ads up strongly. Further evidence of a tight labour market in Australia, as we're seeing globally at the moment. Um, Tuesday, we get the February NAB business survey. Conditions and confidence likely to show uh, robustness in the rebound from the Omicron disruptions. And then on Wednesday, we have Governor Lowe speaking, a speech to the AFR Business Summit in Sydney. Uh, we also have Deputy, Deputy Governor DeBell speaking at a panel referring to Digital Economy Conference on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, we get the March inflation expectations likely to be elevated, mirroring a lift in official estimates of CPI. And then we round out the week in Australia on Friday. Again, Governor uh, Lowe speaking at a, uh, a banking conference. So uh, pay attention to those, uh, those speeches from Governor Lowe uh, next week in terms of the uh, the Australian side of the slate. It, from a technical perspective, looking now for the Aussie to test this quality objective versus the swing low here at 70.95. We have 74. We have descending trend line resistance, trend channel resistance, sorry, coming in there. And we have the yearly pivot, 7420s. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side at a minimum looking for a three-wave corrective move back into the pivot at 7180s. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.